The announcement of the peace deal between Israel and United Arab Emirates was made from the White House in America. After all, the deal has been brokered by the United States. President Donald Trump is claiming it as a victory now. Political observers say it is a major foreign policy win for Trump, something he can showcase to his voters in the election year. Sitting behind his desk in the Oval Office, Donald Trump harped on the fact that it was America that brokered this deal, just the kind of headline he wanted after months of bad press. First the Wuhan virus, then the economy, and then race riots in America. It's been a difficult summer in an election year. Trump is trailing in the race. This deal gives him a booster shot. Both Israel and the Emirates credited President Donald Trump for the deal. The White House is now planning a signing ceremony, a photo op for Trump. In the frame was a man who likes to stay away from the spotlight, the man who engineered this deal. Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor, also a practicing Orthodox Jew. The deal was secured after six weeks of indirect talks with Kushner playing mediator. If Trump is the president, Jared Kushner is the second most powerful man in the White House. Trump made Kushner in charge of the West Asia peace plan, and both of them have invested significant diplomatic capital into this project. Donald Trump's first foreign visit as president was to West Asia. He visited Riyadh, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and Bethlehem in a span of four days. He also went to Western Wall and created quite a stir. That story is for another day, though. For the moment, let me tell you that Trump has achieved what many of his predecessors wanted to. Bill Clinton, George Bush, Barack Obama all promised peace and failed to deliver. Our next report tells you more. Just a few moments ago, I hosted a very special call with two friends, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the United Arab Emirates, where they agreed to finalize a historical peace agreement. A peace deal in West Asia, the dream of every modern-day American president. From Barack Obama to George Bush and Bill Clinton, they all have chased this dream. They came to office promising a deal. The first attempt was the Oslo Accord. After decades of violence, the Israeli government and the Palestinian Liberation Organization met in 1992. The meetings held in Oslo culminated in this historic moment. In 1993, Yitzhak Rabin of Israel and Yasser Arafat of Palestine shook hands in Washington, D.C. Bill Clinton brought together the two bitter adversaries and declared it as a moment of hope. Now the efforts of all who have labored before us bring us to this moment, a moment when we dare to pledge what for so long seemed difficult even to imagine, that the security of the Israeli people will be reconciled with the hopes of the Palestinian people, and there will be more security and more hope for all. Rabin and Arafat buried the hatchet, even won the Nobel Prize, but their deal failed to end the conflict. When George Bush took over the White House, he rolled out a new plan. In 2002, he appeared before the press to urge Israel to end its military offensive against the Palestinians. The storms of violence cannot go on. Enough is enough. And to those who would try to use the current crisis as an opportunity to widen the conflict, Stay out. In 2003, Bush had his own photo op with leaders of Israel and Palestine in Jordan. His roadmap for peace called for an independent Palestinian state living side by side with Israel. The plan was never implemented. Then came Barack Obama, promising change. When he visited the Cairo University in 2009, Obama promised a shift in America's West Asia policy. For him, there was only one solution. The only resolution is for the aspirations of both sides to be met through two states where Israelis and Palestinians each live in peace and security.
That is in Israel's interest, Palestine's interest, America's interest, and the world's interest. The effort did not deliver. What dominated the headlines instead was Obama's uneasy equation with Benjamin Netanyahu. In 2011, when the U.S. asked Israel to withdraw to the border agreed in 1967, Netanyahu publicly refused. While Israel is prepared to make generous compromises for peace, it cannot go back to the 1967 lines. Obviously, there are some differences between us in the precise formulations and language. The election of Donald Trump was cheered in Jerusalem. He promised the deal of the century, and he has delivered some semblance of it. Will this one bring peace to West Asia? The jury is still out on that. Bureau report, we are World is One.